Hey guys and gals, this is Alden at the Moss and Crate dot com, and this is a DWM nineteen fourteen PO eight Luger nine millimeter. DWN stands for, and I'm going to butcher this here, Deutsche Waffen und Munition Fabriken. So, German arms and ammunition. And you can see here this one has a little Russian X on it, a little Russian capture X on there. And it is mostly original matching. There are a couple parts on here that have been renumbered to match. But this one has a really cool history about it, and I thought I'd go into that. I'm not going to do any shooting or anything with it or taking it apart. You guys have seen that many times before on YouTube, so we'll skip doing that. So this was made in 1914, right at the start of World War I. It went through World War I without being captured or surrendered. It stayed in German service through the Weimar Republic, the Weimar Republic, into the Nazi Germany era. You can see it's actually got a Waffen amp there. And of course, with German, the W's are pronounced with a, a V, so I guess it'd be Waffen amp. But, uh, yeah, you can see that there. So, I'm not quite sure if this was handed down from an officer to maybe their son that went and served in World War II, or maybe the officer remained in service and he was probably a higher rank by that point. But it did end up serving in World War II. And at that point, it was either captured or surrendered to the Russians. And we know that for a couple very simple reasons. The first one, so you can see how that nice, high-polished bluing there, that's what the original bluing would have looked like. And you have this very lackluster, almost a matte bluing. And this was done by the Russians. You'll see a lot of this on things like Russian capture K98Ks and so on. So it's very... That's the first giveaway. Second biggest giveaway, if I can get it to focus here, is the little X there. You'll see that on a lot of Russian refurbished weapons, especially captured weapons from World War II. Let's see if we can get a good mountain view for you guys so you can kind of get the sight picture. Typical military sight picture there. Not the best, but hey, it works. And the Russians refurbished it. And then, because it's already been through... World War I, the Weimar Republic, World War II, both for Germany and then probably Russia, it was then handed over to the East Germans. And the East Germans used it for their VOPO, Volks Polizei, People's Police. And we know that for a couple of reasons. The first one are these VOPO grips. And it's like a Bakelite material with a little target emblem there. And I actually like these grips a lot. They're very comfortable and they, in my opinion, at least they're an improvement over the original wood grips. Uh, obviously a lot like the World War II black bait-like grips, bake-like grips that the Germans were using. But the East Germans put these on here. Then they also swapped out the magazine. Now it is matching to the gun, but as you can see it's an aluminum base, so that's not something that would have been on a World War I gun. And then another really cool giveaway, by the way there's the import marking, really tiny, which is awesome. Got your proof markings there. The other biggest giveaway, if I can get it to focus, I'm really sorry about this. Let me see if I can get it. There we go. See the crown in on the barrel. So the East Germans actually replaced this barrel with a brand new barrel, which is why it's nice, beautiful bluing compared to the rest of the gun. So this pistol went through World War I, World War II, I should say also the Weimar Republic, Russia, and then ended up in East Germany, and now it's here in the United States. But pretty cool little pistol. This thing has been very well traveled, and I just thought I would show this off to you guys.
I guess now would be a good time to say this is not for sale because that's always going to be the the next question is, hey, what is this going up on the website? This is another one of the interesting historical tidbits that I like to keep. Probably not really a good collector's item because collectors are looking for a mint from the factory weapon, but I just thought it was neat. This thing had been in five different governments and is still live and ticking. I actually shot it last week, put a couple of magazines through it, worked great. Click that subscribe button if you haven't already. I'll get some more cool videos up like this in the future. Thanks for watching, guys.